other classes. In those classes, we, uh, we used our double column notes to help us actually develop some of the information here. And we'll have to do that next class period. So please make certain those are done by then. Okay, however, I'm going to give you some to just put in your notebooks for today. Uh, so that way we don't have to do as much next time because I still plan on having our test on Wednesday over um, aniline's. So um, within flatworms, there are three groups of worms. Class Turbellaria is our first group, and those are mostly marine. That means that most of them live in the ocean. Like all other flatworms, they have soft, flattened bodies. Uh, remember, their bodies being flat is a key trait of this group. And they're all very soft, um, no exoskeleton, uh, no bones, nothing like that. They also all tend to be carnivores. So if we get a little time before break, um, we will feed our flatworms um, just if we have time. And so they will eat all kinds of meat. They will eat each other if they're desperate. They'll eat liver. Um, so members of this group uh, do tend to be carnivores. This slide right here, um, what you see is uh, that these organisms have three tissue layers. So that is what I would uh, add to my um, notebook. I write down that they have three tissue layers, and those tissue layers are the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Uh, you should also see they do not have a coelom, they do not have a body cavity. Um, earthworms also have three tissue layers to their body, but earthworms do have a body cavity. There's space and organs in here, whereas with our flatworms, it's just tissue. This is if you took one of those worms we worked with in our lab, and you cut them uh, in a cross-section. This is what it would look like. It's a drawing of what it would look like if you could see that. So you can see they have muscle tissue, a nerve cord, um, a, a pharynx, a gastrovascular cavity. Uh, but that's, they're still very, very simple animals. That's what that same slide would look like under the microscope. And again, another region on a microscope, and then different areas show different, um, like one shows the epidermis, two shows their gastrovascular cavity, which is how they digest their food. Um, most of these live in the ocean, as I said earlier, so we've got several examples that live in the ocean. When you look at this picture, this structure right here is their digestive system. So um, that's something you want to notice and point out. Um, the ones that live in the ocean are lots of different colors. So you can see that there's different patterns and shapes in each one of these as a separate species. Again, these are several that live in the ocean. You should notice they do not have eye spots, but they do have um, little feelers that they can use to sense their environment. And more oceanic flatworms. So one thing you might notice is these are much more colorful than the ones we looked at in class. And the reason for that is the ones we looked at in class are freshwater, and these are oceanic. And there's another one. So you can see uh, sensory structures here in the head region, but not necessarily those eye spots that we saw in our flatworms. Okay, so trematodes are another group of flatworms, but these are our flukes. Okay, and flukes are a group that is entirely parasitic. You will not find any that just live on their own. Uh, they rely on a host to survive. As part of their parasitic lifestyle, you'll find they have suckers and a tough outer covering. The suckers allow them to latch onto their host, whether it's the intestine or the lungs, and the tough outer coverings protect them from their host immune system. Um, when you look at this organism right here, it's a picture of a fluke. And one thing you should notice is, one, we can see the sucker. Again, that's where they attach to maybe your intestine or your lung or your liver. And then two, the body is made up mostly of reproductive organs. So this whole section is eggs, um, this whole section is testes. And so it would be a safe inference to say that the majority of their life is devoted to reproduction. Um, there's an actual picture of a fluke and also what they look like when they're in a cyst form. 
Okay, and that's all we'll talk about today. Uh, we'll work a little bit more with this next time, and we'll do tapeworms next time too.